Hi, welcome to Fundamentals Friday. A couple of episodes back we looked at the microcontroller voltage doubler, otherwise known as the Dixon doubler, or the diode charge pump voltage doubler. And quite a few people asked about the inverter configuration of that. So let's run through it, should be pretty quick. If you haven't seen the previous video, watch that. It'll be linked down below. So this is what we had previously with the Dixon doubler. We had our VCC voltage, it might be say 5 volts or 3.3 volts or whatever your system voltage is. Um, and then we feed in a square wave from our microcontroller. It doesn't have to be from a micro, could be from something else, but let's just say it's from a microcontroller. And based on the Dixon doubler here with the output filter, the output voltage is uh, V out equals two times VCC. So you double your VCC voltage minus your diode losses, of course. But we won't get into that yet. We're talking about the ideal case. Now, how do you get a voltage inverter? Well, it's very simple. Instead of doubling, we want to invert. So what do we do? Hmm. We erase these diodes here and we draw them the other way around like that. But that's not all we have to do. We also have to get rid of VCC here. That's no longer VCC. That is ground like that and bingo we keep our um, signal from our square wave from our microcontroller there it goes from zero to vcc and in this case our output voltage v out is going to be not doubled it's going to be minus vcc once again ideal case assuming no diode losses bingo that's our voltage inverter that's all there is to it sorry i don't think this one has a fancy name but it can go under other names like uh, charge pump voltage inverter, diode voltage inverter, diode charge pump inverter, all sorts of combinations like that. But eh, it's a voltage inverter. Great if you want to, um, if you have just a single uh, supply, it can be operating from batteries or just from a uh, single regulated uh, main supply or something like that. And you want to generate a negative supply for an op amp or maybe an offset voltage for uh, a voltage regulator to go down to zero volts, which we've talked about in the past or something like that. Very useful. But like all these uh, diode charge pumps there, pretty low power you know you're only going to get you know a couple of milliamps out of this sort of you know tens of milliamps absolute top so really it's not for anything high power and once again you can also follow this with a negative voltage regulator if you need regulation there is however one more thing that we have to invert which i haven't shown here yet invert no pun intended before with our doubler our capacitors were like that. If you used polarized capacitors, they'd be positive there and positive there. In this case, no, we have to reverse those. So if you're using polarized capacitors, positive is here because our output voltage is negative. We've got zero volts here. This is more negative than this. So it doesn't make sense unless you actually think about it connecting the positive of the capacitor to ground, but because that's negative, of course, the capacitor is still has a positive voltage or the correct polarity across it. And likewise, this one here. So how does this work? Well, you guessed it, very similar to how our previous Greenacre and Dixon doublers have worked. Instead of doubling and level shifting, we're actually inverting in this case. So let's assume that our current is flowing through the diode like that. So our diode is conducting. Once again, ideal diodes, no losses at all, zero volts, voltage drop on that. And let's assume that we've got, uh, where our input waveform is at VCC and this capacitor has had time to charge up. Now, when this diode conducts, okay, what is it? It's an ideal diode, it's got no losses. This point here is gonna equal this point here and here it's gonna be ground. So our reference point one, which I've shown in green, and this will be the green waveform here, by the way, that's the um, output filter. We're just ignoring that at the moment. We're only looking at uh, signal number one here, the green waveform. I should probably draw that in there. Number one, there it is. Then our, this point, number one, is zero volts there. But remember, I said our capacitor is charged up. And if you remember, capacitors can't change their voltage instantaneously. So we've got, what have we got? A charge capacitor here with zero volts here, 5 volts here, 
what happens when this now switches down to zero like this we've now got zero volts here what point does this become well our diode is no longer is now going to be reversed biased so our current well it's going to be a reverse via so our current's trying to flow through like that but that this point it can't flow through the diode because it's open so if we've got um, now zero volts here but we've got plus five volts well uh, vcc not five volts whatever your vcc voltage happens to be so what happens when this is now at zero volts and our capacitor is charged to positive here and negative here well this point is a nice solid zero volts now because our driving circuit our microcontroller or whatever it is has got a reasonably low output impedance it's going to be a nice solid zero volts here so this point has no choice now because we've got um, plus vcc across this capacitor this is zero that vcc voltage just doesn't suddenly vanish what happens is our current tries to flow in this direction our diode becomes reverse biased and this point i.e when a diode's reverse biased no current flows at all and this point has no choice but if we've got zero volts here but we've still got vcc on our capacitor look zero then this point becomes minus there's that negative it becomes minus it drops down like that to our minus vcc and that's all there is to it and just for completeness we should actually draw this input waveform on here as well so let's call that number three shall we and what happens here it's not zero remember we our condition was starting out at vcc to charge that cap so it's like that so remember we said when this point drops down to zero here it inverts there it is it drops down to zero and bang it inverts produces our inverted waveform output and then of course we add on our output filter yes it's just a simple uh, diode filter you're familiar with those from your linear power supply but yeah the diode's backwards because we're dealing with negative supply voltages but it works exactly the same all it does is filter out this negative and produces our nice solid if we've got no load of course a nice solid negative output voltage at minus vcc once again assuming ideal diodes once you start putting a load on there well and real diodes as we're going to see when we build up the circuit it's going to drop but that is the basic operation of our voltage inverter too easy once again for the cost lousy cost of two diodes and two capacitors you can generate a negative rail from any circuit that has a switching component like that and of course that switching uh, component as we said could be a microcontroller could be a triple five timer um, or uh, often they will uh, do this as well if you've got a DC a positive DC to DC converter you can actually tap the switching signal off that and use this uh, inverter circuit to generate a low current negative supply and of course you can get uh, dedicated charge pump or capacitor charge pump chips to do this you know the classic 7660 uh, voltage inverter which also you can configure that the other way as we've said before works as a voltage doubler as well but that's a classic inverter I think on the market sort of the maximum output current like hundred milliamps or something your usual jelly bean ones like 10 odd milliamps uh, max output current really low stuff because you really can't put much charge in these capacitors because that's what you're using you're doing you're using the capacitor as an energy storage element and well a little tiny wimpy cap eh. and to the breadboard we go we've got exactly the same circuit we just saw on the uh, whiteboard build up uh, we're going to use three channels of the scope to measure this thing this will be channel one this point will be channel two this point or uh, the output will be channel three i've got uh, 0.47 microfarad uh, caps here and here and i've just got uh, uh crappy uh 1n4148 diodes in there so we're going to get a bit of loss on those uh diodes and we won't be able to drive much load but we'll start out by viewing the waveforms with no load and you'll see we'll get exactly what we saw on the whiteboard and this time just for fun we'll use our gw instec uh gds 2304a uh vpo oscilloscope now uh, the yellow waveform here is channel 1, the blue waveform is channel point, uh, two, and the purple waveform there is the output channel 
3. So there's our input uh, waveform there, 0 to 5 volts uh, square wave come in from my function generator and point number two as you can see it inverts just like we saw on the whiteboard and then our output voltage of course we've got no load it's just flat like that so we get in oh by the way they're all uh sorry that reference point there they're all reference to that uh, point there they're all dc coupled of course and that's our reference ground point so five volts up here we're all at uh, two volts per division so two four five and then this one drops down to negative five but you'll notice that if we up oh, wrong control when you change scopes like this you'll notice that yeah you can just see the diode clamping in there you can see the diode loss in there it's not precisely zero so the diode clamps it not to zero volts but to you know plus well you know 0 0.6 volts it's actually lower than that because we've got bugger all current but it does clamp it to that diode loss and likewise you'll notice that the purple waveform there even though they're all referenced precisely on the zero volt line here there's a diode loss in there from the blue waveform to the purple waveform and once again that will depend on the loss in your diode at a particular current so a, a particular output current so you would have to look up your uh, diode characteristic curve to find out what that's going to be now let's have a look what happens when we put on a lousy 1 meg load. Lousy, I mean, it's really high, okay, lousy amount of current. We're only talking, if it stays at 5, if our output voltage stays at 5 volts, we're only talking 5 microamps. So we're drawing bugger all current. Here we go. This is with currently with no load, and let me whack it on here. Get the alligator clip, bang. There it is. You can visibly see that change. That change quite significantly. And we'll just add a few little uh, measurements in here to make our life easier. So let's have a look and see what I've done here. I really like the uh, measurement uh, capability of this GW Instec. Works uh, quite well in both uh, adding and removing measurements. And this little uh, window down here shows all our measurements. Now, what I'm able to do here is I'm actually able to add the uh, peak, uh, what well, the max value up here. So if we have a look, that uh, is our maximum value of well you can choose your channel in this case channel one so our yellow waveform there i've got the well sorry not the uh p not the max value i've got the high value there which doesn't include any overshoot or anything like that so there you go uh, we're going to get our high volt there our high value there 4.96 volts as um, I said this is coming uh, direct from my function generator, so it's going to be pretty close to 5 volts. It's low impedance um, output from the function generator, so, and, well, it is very, very close to 5 volts, as you'd expect. And then what I'm able to add there is um, for channel 2, now we're onto the blue waveform here, I'm able to add the low value, so the bottom of the blue waveform down there, there we go, 4.48 volts, and then I'm also able to add the high value up here, which then can show our um, diode loss in that direction. And there it is, 320 millivolts. And as you can see, it's above, it's 320 millivolts. Uh, well, it's just jumped up to 400 above that uh, reference point there. It's not going to be hugely accurate, of course. We've only got an 8-bit uh, analog to digital, digital converter in here. Um, it depends on how you've uh, input um, scaled the waveforms and stuff like that. Anyway, so that can show our diode loss there. Pretty neat. And then our uh, then I've got the mean value selected here of channel 3, which is our output waveform. And there's our output voltage of four, minus 4.2 volts. Of course, we expect that to be uh, 5 volts, but it's not because of our uh, accumulative diode losses there. We've got two diode losses in there. You remember this one, the low value, uh, there it is. It's only uh, minus 4.48, minus 4.5 volts. So we've already lost uh, 0.5 volts in our diode drop going negative like that. And then we lose another, in this case, about uh, from minus 4.5 go into the output here so this point here is that uh, blue waveform minus 4.5 so we've lost our diode drop there and then we lose our diode drop again on the output with uh, minus 4.28 so we've lost another 0.3 volts across that diode there oh by the way this is for a uh, 1 meg load still and if we open our load let's do that boom 
there we go they did jump up a bit our uh, low voltage here jumped up to uh, minus 6.64 so it dropped up 0.14 volts there and our output voltage jumped up a little bit to 4.4 but let's put the one meg load back shall we and bingo you can see those values change let's go to say a hundred K load okay there we go we're now getting an output voltage of minus four volts with a hundred K load and then we could let's drop that to be horrible and drop that down to 10 K and whoa now we start seeing some ripple effects by the way if you're wondering how I'm doing that just using my decade uh, resistance box here very handy to have uh, build yourself a decade of resistance box just for this uh, purpose so we can get a good look at that uh, get rid of the menu there get a good look at that ripple now that output ripple due you can see the capacitor charging and then discharging on that purple waveform so there's that little charge there and then whoop discharge and once again this is going to depend on the value of your capacitors and your switching frequency so our switching frequency at the moment with this uh, 10k load is uh, 1 kilohertz. So um, as you can see, it's got the hardware uh, frequency counter in there showing the 1 kilohertz. But we can uh, change that, of course. Let's give that a go. Yeah, sorry, I've got to reach across my bench. And let's change it to 10 kilohertz. Here we go. Boom. Let's expand that out a bit and you can see that we're getting no more rippling there the ripple's gone at 10 kilohertz exactly what you'd expect uh, get a smoother response like that with less ripple by either increasing your um, frequency or increasing the value of your capacitor capacitors or both and let's get really nasty and uh, take that down to one well i just shorted that out there we go and take it down to 1k Ooh. That's pretty horrible. Where's our trigger level? The reason it was jittery there is because our trigger level was right up the uh, top here, right at the top of that waveform. So we bring that down to the center, of course. Oh, you can just hit the 50% uh, button on your scope. It whacks it in the middle, and there we go. That's at 1K load, and we're still getting out minus 2.76 volts there. So, yeah, your diode losses are starting to kill you now at down at five volts as you'd expect i mean you can get better than this by using um shocky diodes and we're only using uh 0.47 microfarad uh caps as well you know typical ones you might have in there or you might have a microfarad or something like a ceramic cap otherwise you know oh you can get 10 microfarad ceramics uh typical in you know a basic smd design these days but you know sort of above that you're sort of going to go into the electrolytic uh territory and if we short that load out Boom, look at that. <laughs> We're even killing our input uh, waveform. So there you go. There's a diode voltage inverter. You can build for practically uh, zero cost because you've probably already got some diodes and some capacitors in your bill of materials anyway. So it can be an absolute bargain if you just need to generate a, um, a simple low current negative voltage as i said for an op amp or for a negative regulate or for to get a regulator down to zero or for any other purpose that you need that um split supply and once again you can add a uh, linear regulator on the output here if your input voltage is high enough you could use a low dropout regulator so if you had a five volt uh supply for example then you could easily use even with um, at, at uh, low currents, even with crappy 1N4148 diodes and low values of capacitors in here, you could you get a fully regulated and clean 3.3 volt linear supply with a low dropout regulator. Not a problem. But uh, using this particular load, which is 10K at the moment, there's our output voltage, uh, 3.64 volts. That's good enough um, to give us basically, uh, you know, a couple of hundred uh, microamps um, output current if we use a low power uh, low dropout voltage regulator at 3.3 volts we'd get a nice clean supply with even these crappy parts so there you go i hope you enjoyed that if you want to discuss it jump on over to the eev blog forum the link direct link to the uh, individual video thread is down below and as always if you like fundamentals friday catch you next time